my goodness, it's the three o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel here on Community Matters on Think Tech. Our show today is called the Hawaii History Through Amazing Pictures. We're going to talk about that plus much more. There are so many images out there. There are so many things to be educated about Hawaii's past. And for this discussion, uh, we have Jeffrey Bingham Mead, who used to be at HPU. No, no. No. Where were you before? Uh, you I, was, I was at University of Phoenix, and I was at uh, Hawaii Tokai International College, and at uh, KCC uh, with the Honda International all Center. All those places. Yes. And, and now he's on the mainland, but he's still doing all oh, I'm those still places. Going, I still go back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, wow, well, we got to hear about this. So oh, okay. This is like a rendezvous, uh, a reminiscence and what have you. Yes. Um, and so we, Jeffrey has been sending, the, the background is Jeffrey has been sending me these fabulous pictures. I don't know where he gets them. Uh, they are beautiful pictures of, of the history of Hawaii. Yes. And I want to talk about how you get those kinds of sure. pictures and why you're sending them and what you're doing in terms of education about Hawaii's history sure. and other things that you do. Thank you. So tell us, catch us up, will you, Jeffrey? Okay, uh, let's see. Well, I'll tell you. I am the, um, I'm the president and the co-founder of History Edu Education Hawaii Incorporated. It was co-founded with, uh, with uh, I think, a couple of good friends of yours. One would be John Carroll, and the other one is a retired Brigadier General Francis Ibalani Mosman. Uh -huh. um, and, oh, sure. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so um, uh, so it, uh, we are allied with the National Council for History Education, uh, and um, it's been a really, really fantastic ride. Uh, the, um, uh, the current incarnation of, uh, of that organization is called History Education Hawaii Incorporated. Uh, and you can go on the web and you can see that at historyeducationhawaii.org. Um, and so you can take a, a look at that and, um, and see the, uh, uh, the website, which, by the way, uh, we have to do some uh, updating those. But uh, So you're a media site, yes. maven. You've got the website, yes. the History Education Hawaii. And, and you've got a radio show. Radio show and it's, Facebook. Yes. And Facebook. Well, Facebook is a Facebook is in my blood now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yes, and I do have the radio show that I'm doing. It's a separate thing from uh, the History Education Hawaii organization. Um, it's a, um, a radio show that is... Uh, quite fascinating and quite unique. It's called Marvels of China, Pathways to the Pacific Rim. It is broadcast on AM 1490 WGCH in Greenwich, Connecticut uh, and uh, WGCH.com. So we have um, audio streaming uh, for that. Uh, if you go to podcasts.com, we have an archive site where all of the, um, all of the shows have been updated or, or archived rather, and we are now in our second year. This is a partnership between me and, oh yes, there I am, um, between me and and the, um, uh, the Chinese government, principally the uh, Consul General's Office in New York City, and also with a wonderful title sponsor by the name of Beijing Ambridge International Culture Development Limited. We also work with the Ministry of Culture um, as well. By the way, it's almost all totally English language. Uh, and, uh, and one of the few broadcasts of its kind that is, um, that is like that. We're now in the second year and having a great time. So talking about history, we just had uh, Attorney General Douglas Chin. Yeah, you uh, mentioned. Yes. and um, That's quite something. He's a very important person right now. He sure is. And, but, uh, but one of the things that we were looking for from him and others that we've had on the show is kind of that human side of, uh, of the experience. Here's somebody who, uh, whose parents you know, fled the mainland um, you know, with, with communism. Uh, he was born in Taiwan. Uh, went to the, uh, the uh, Pacific Northwest, came here to, uh, to Hawaii. He has a fascinating uh, personal history, and I found him to be probably one of the most warm and engaging people yeah. that, uh, that I've met in a long time. So it was really good. So, so wherever you are, Doug, thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. I think we're running in parallel places, actually, Jeffrey. You know, if you're a media maven, you've got yeah. all these media going on. I want to step through them one by one, and, yes. and we have a lot of things going okay, on. Okay, You must be overlapping, like in Douglas Shin, for example. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of overlap in all of this. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. It makes it interesting, and it keeps me out of everything except work. Yeah, well, I was, you know, I mean, I should reframe <laughs> my question. What don't you do? Yeah. Uh, people ask me usually, how do, uh, what, when do I sleep? That's usually exactly. the, the, the popular question that, uh, that I get. And I said, when, when I can. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe on, uh, well, no, I'll tell you, I, uh, in all honesty, uh, the only time I ever go to the movies is when I'm 40,000 feet up in the sky. Sure. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, that's when I see all the movies, and it's always nice. So what's the mission, putting all these things together? What do you want to do here? Okay, uh, History Education Hawaii Incorporated, we, we initially founded that. Uh, the earlier incarnation was uh, founded in uh, 2006. 
Um, and the one that we have now that I just mentioned was founded about, uh, what, four years ago. Um, and what we are uh, trying to do is to promote history education here in Hawaii, but also the rest of the Pacific Rim. So we're not just isolated here to, um, uh, to the Hawaiian Islands. Um, I think that because of the culture dynamic here, it makes it very, very unique. So one of the things that we uh, like to do is to do a lot of technological outreach or using the technology, uh, I should say, to reach out to uh, people. So for example, if you go on Facebook, go on Facebook, look up History Education Hawaii Incorporated. We now have about 200 members of the uh, of the group and it spans people of all different backgrounds all different affiliations whatever the case may be everybody is uh, welcomed and one of the things that i do is that i am constantly searching the uh, the World Wide Web, uh, or I look at my, uh, my news feed on, uh, on Facebook and I, and I find all sorts of interesting stories uh, that are going on about, um, about Hawaii, about um, you know, other areas of the world, and some of the new historical discoveries and, um, and things that are going on. Yeah, it strikes me that you know, there's a lot of talk um, about Hawaiian history and culture yes. these days. I mean, it seems to be permeating our, our world yes. in Hawaii, you know, yes. sometimes accurately and sometimes not accurately yeah. and, uh, and that there should be different interpretations it's very rich panoply of things that have happened here in the last couple hundred years oh yes but uh, one you know one thing strikes me is that we haven't, we haven't finished we haven't finished researching that we haven't finished exploring it oh, yeah. we haven't finished uh, finding meaning in it yes. a friend of mine uh, is a is a stamp collector he right he stamp he, oh yes he collects hawaiian covers which are actually one of the most valuable objects you could collect. Indeed they are, In the yes. world. They really go for big bucks and they go all over the world. Yeah. And we don't realize it here. We don't, we don't think of that. But the fact is that Hawaii has this kind of cachet yeah. everywhere. Yes. And uh, people collect things from Hawaii. Yes. And um, to, to add further, that you know, in learning about um, these uh, Hawaiian covers, uh, my friend learned about the history of Hawaii and wound up writing a multiple volume set on mm -hmm. the history of Hawaii which it takes two people to carry around. <laughs> I'll bet it does. It's huge. <laughs> yes. There's so much information, yeah. you know. Fact is, we do have the information. We just need to analyze it, you know, and examine it and, and, and disseminate it, as Absolutely. you are. Absolutely, yes. So is, is part of your study here Hawaiian history per se? Uh, or has it come through the, the graphics? I mean, what's the connection? Well, I, actually, it's all of those things. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's everything. You know, one of the things I will tell you is that there are people and museums here in Hawaii that are really doing a fantastic job about uh, using the technologies uh, that are available to disseminate you know, history. Um, it may not be totally in depth or anything, but it's enough to to get people to really be interested. And, and you know, there, we have a lot of people on the Facebook um, uh, a group that, that say, aha, oh wow, that's interesting. I, I forgot about that. Or, oh, you know, my uncle or my auntie turned around and uh, was there for that, you know, and, and, this, um, and this, that, and the other. So really amazing things, um, you know, that, uh, that happen. So, um, what do you got on the screen there? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, this is the, um, uh, let's see, this is the, uh, that's the Facebook page. Um, and by the way, what you see there at the bottom, you see somebody in, um, in, in Chinese, you know, yes, Chinese yes, opera costume. Yes, yes. There is a special that is going on tonight. It's called The Story of China. Go to PBS, everybody. This starts tonight. It is a really fantastic show. Um, uh, and uh, I am very, very excited about this. My friends in China, all over the place, are, are going to try to tune in. You will be able to, what, to watch online if you can't so watch it. it's the history of China. History Multiple of China. Multiple segments. Multiple segments, absolutely. And what else do we have here? We have some, um, you know, sky. Um, uh, let's see. I, I I can't quite see what that is, but uh, but that's okay. Oh yes, and we have baseball teams and um, and, and things like that. So one of the things that uh, that we do is that we try to get all sorts of different histories. We uh, you know we have a very very diverse audience. Um, that's one of the wonderful things. It's also one of the challenges as well. So um, we have all sorts of things. We have uh, members of the royal family and uh, and all who went off to the mainland and um, you know to do their own part in uh, in history. Um, uh, you know uh, we have uh, you know people who have uh, posted things online. Uh, I, I happen to try to subscribe to as many as humanly possible uh, that is out there. What we have up here right now is the um, is the website. Very nice. Uh, history Education Hawaii. Thank you very very much. The uh, person. The person who designed that for me um, is, uh, uh, her name is Heather Wimberly. Um, she just retired from her web uh, work and everything, but this is one of her uh, creations. She lives in uh, Manoa Valley. Um, uh, her father was the uh, founder Architect. of the uh, of the Wimberly Allison Goo. Yes, yes right. that was her father. Oh, she is 
uh, web architect, if you will, by, uh, by nature. <laughs> From one architecture and, to another. And a truly gifted artist. I mean, uh, she has been an absolute godsend. We've been doing business together since uh, uh, the mid-1990s. Uh, that's very nice. Thank but, you. you know, I, uh, going back uh, yes. to another one of my recollections, sure. uh, my firm represented a fellow one time yeah. who acquired a library yeah. of Hawaiian history graphics. Right. Kind of like the ones you send around, the, the ones on your, on your page. Yes. And um, it was a huge amount of material. And, and I believe that he wasn't the only one who owned such a, a collection. Yeah. And he disseminated, he, first he analyzed it. He had an old office where all the stuff was hanging off the ceiling. He was trying to figure out. <laughs> I know those offices, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the original location of, of, the, of the collection. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and, and it was overwhelming how much material yes. there was. Yeah. Um, and I said to myself, you know, th this is not something that you can go and find, for example, on the web so easily. Yeah. Um, these collections are hard to come by and yes. they are so valuable, yeah. not, not necessarily in money, although I would ask you that, yeah. uh, but in, the, in, in, the, in allowing you a fuller understanding of the way it was in Hawaii. Yes, yeah, it, it does. What, you, you mentioned about finding you know, original images and documents yeah. and things like that. One of the things that's fabulous about the, uh, the technology is that, uh, I mean, let's face it, you know, um, uh, we're here in downtown Honolulu. We're, we're all, uh, surrounded by offices and the schools and, and everything, and everybody is terribly busy right now. Not everybody has the time to go down to an archive like at the, um, at the State Archives or at Hawaiian Mission Houses or Iolani Palace or, or, um, or anywhere else, for example. So we really are kind of duty bound to take that history, use the technology tools that we have available, and to bring that to the people to better educate them yeah. uh, about that. That's really a big part of all. Of this. But how do you do that? I mean, in the case, you know, I believe in push <laughs> yeah. more than more than websites. Yes. I, I believe that you have to deliver it in yes. some way. Yes. And um, now you deliver it with me. I mean, for years yeah. I've been getting these fabulous yeah. graphics from yeah. you, yeah. and it's just it's really fabulous yes. what you send around, and and uh, it opens my mind to take a look. Well, at thank your you, mail. thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all the time. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Facebook, I think. Facebook, yes. Um, uh, our blog site has a little bit uh, been uh, been dormant. We do uh, maintain a blog site, historyeducationhawaii.blogspot.com. We are reviving that um, so in order to get more of the news about you know events and um, and and things that are uh, going on. So using the uh, the technology to uh, to deliver maybe what's going on at the um, you know the Hawaii uh, you know the Hawaii Judiciary History Center. There there happen We've to be favorites of mine. Yeah. Yes, uh, and uh, they're wonderful people over there. They really are. Um, I've even brought students, international students, there to do with, uh, some of the mock trials. Oh. Oni versus Meek, that is usually the favorite that, um, uh, that we have. And the staff over there, uh, Matt Matisse uh, and, and his, uh, his uh, team over there are really fabulous people. Yeah, they yeah. really, really are. So, um, so we're kind of duty-bound to bring everything So you're uh, to reaching them. out yes. with it. Absolutely. And so, I mean, yeah. what, you, you're conducting tours, uh, obviously, at the Hawaii History, Judicial History Center? Well, no, they do that. They do, but I, you're I, putting them in touch with but them. But I, absolutely, yes. We, we, we put teachers and, and uh, tour groups and, and anybody. Uh, you know, we're not restricted to the schools, per se, even though we're History Education Hawaii. Um, or we don't restrict ourselves to the schools. We're actually trying to reach out to the general population as much as we can. How? Because, uh, well, through the technology, any way that we can, right, through email, through the Facebook, through the blog site, through the website. Um, if I happen to see them walking up and down uh, 4th Street, I'll say, you know, oh, did you happen to see this, you know, and, and, and things like that. So um, uh, any way possible that we can, we, we do. Yes. What's the business model on this, Jeffrey? <laughs> Sounds elusive. <laughs> uh, we we kind of make it up as we go along, you know, that's the business model. Um, because the technology is actually in many ways being made up as we go along. You know, the, you know if, if you had said to me, oh, 10 years, like 10 years ago, we would be sitting here, we'd be talking about, you know, these wonderful images that we have online and mm -hmm. the stories that go behind them, oh, yeah. uh, I would have said, wow, it sounds like really very interesting science fiction. Thank you very, very much. But um, but now here we are. And who knows where we're going to be, you know, uh, even, even a couple of years from now, you know, who knows? But it's exciting. That's the thing that's interesting about all of this is the the excitement about the different directions that technology can go to, the way that it can be used to enrich people's lives, um, and, uh, and which is part of what it is that we are we are doing. So it's great, yeah. Was this that was Kauai How Church a minute ago? Um, no, that one was the I think that was the um, uh, uh, the foreign mission school in that yeah, that's the foreign mission school in Cornwall, Connecticut. That was uh, based on I think a lithograph or. An, uh, uh, yes. By the way, I got a Peter Young. I, I, I'll tell you. Sure, you DLNR. Oh yes, I have to tell you, Peter is 
he's fabulous. He really, really is um, because he writes these incredible stories, pairs them up with the images, which is a really good educational tool to, uh, to do, by the way. And Peter's been doing this for many, many years. So I happen to be on his list. And when I receive everything he does is, I believe, almost daily. I post it on the History of Education Hawaii Facebook page. People get to, uh, to see that, and, um, and so that's one example of how it is that there is one individual uh, out there here in Hawaii. There are others as well uh, that, uh, that do the same thing, and we disseminate that. So you're looking for exchange. You're looking for yeah. uh, comments and contact. You're looking for remarks and feedback. Oh, absolutely, sure. Um, and, uh, but, but just uh, an appreciation of what it is that, uh, that is out there, uh, especially, again, uh, you know, the fact that we have all such busy lives uh, and not all of us have the time that we wish that we had to go and visit the museums or the libraries, especially during working hours. It's kind of a tough so thing let's to talk, do. Uh, let's take a short break, come back. I want to okay. talk about your radio show and okay. how this all um, you know, works in your radio show. Sure, okay. Okay, we'll Sounds be right good. back. Okay. That's Jeffrey Bingham Mead. Yeah. We'll be right back. Okay. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I'm the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at, from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to politicians to regulators to the utility so please join us tuesdays at one o'clock for power up okay we're back i told you we'd come back yep jeffrey bingham <laughs> made he's uh, uh history hawaii yeah what is it like gonna get the right history name? education history hawaii education incorporated hawaii. yeah that's okay it's very <laughs> important i mean you know because it's not just the history it's trying to it's trying to propagate the history and it's get people to think about the everything history. under the sun yeah <laughs> so i i was uh, going to ask you about the radio show okay because i'm always interested in radio shows yes. it's a great medium what are you doing on it okay uh it, the uh, title of it is marvels of china pathways to the pacific rim we are now in our second year we broadcast out of 8, uh, am 1490 wgch in greenwich connecticut which happens to be my ancestral hometown it's where mm -hmm born and raised, and I still um, you know, have a home there and, you know, and all that. Um, it, it's very interesting what, uh, what happened uh, uh, with this. It was an outgrowth, if you see the picture right there, mm -hmm. uh, that is me in Beijing, and what happened was that I was invited almost two years ago by the government of China uh, to be there as an honored guest for the um, 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. So if you remember seeing the news, it was a big military parade um, in, in Beijing. I was there for that, uh, and I was there with you know, some of the uh, remaining members of the Flying Tigers. Oh, really? Um, and sure. this, my father was one of the China Marines, one of the last of them. Um, and uh, after surviving Okinawa, he was transferred from the 4th Marine Division to the 1st Marine, sent to Tianjin, and uh, was uh, there for the surrender. Um, and uh, was stationed in Tianjin and uh, Beijing uh, for about maybe six or seven months, and then left in, uh, I believe it was uh, April of uh, 1946. You say the surrender happened in Tianjin? Uh, Tianjin? Tianjin, yes. It did. It's uh, now a big tech uh, city. Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> yes. But now, back in those days, it was, of course, in ruins uh, and, uh, and, and in terrible, terrible shape. My father brought back a lot of pictures that he took. Uh, he died seven and a half years ago, and one of the last wishes that he had for me, he says, I would really like you to put this into some kind of a book form and publish it, which I am working on, um, you know, right now. Well, there were some stories that were done about me by worldjournal.com, China Press, and suddenly um, I got a, an email from the vice consul of the, um, of the Chinese consulate in New York City, you know, a lot of flowing language and all, and so, you know, we would like to honor you by inviting you as our guest. That's and, very and, nice. Well, I got to tell you, I sent it to all my Chinese friends in New York and elsewhere, and, and I... I said, is this for real? And, and one of them, who is a very, very, very close friend of mine, he says, look, he says, he says, you have a tendency to overanalyze things. He says, just say yes and go. And I said, so I wrote back and I said, yes and Good I'll advice. go. Good advice. Yeah, it was, you know, and I've kept that since, by the way. So, uh, yeah, a lesson learned, right? So um, I went and um, after I got back, I was there for about 10 days. 
It was, it was uh, one of these uh, truly transformational experiences. It was my first time to ah, China. Yeah. It always is. The oh, first time yeah, China yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and I didn't want to come back, I'll be <laughs> honest with you. I read, and my father said the same thing. He said, you know, when we, you know I didn't want to leave. And I thought, okay, so we have that in common. So after I got back, I was a guest on one of the daytime radio shows at, at 1490 WGCH. The host and the president of the company invited me into the office and they said, you're really good. You have a radio voice. and. I said, well, that's very nice. Thank you very, very much. And they said, we would like to give you a half hour uh, you know, time slot um, and you can do it on anything. They said, you're kind of different from everybody because they said, you're from here. Your family has been here for almost 400 years, but you've also got this connection to Hawaii and Asia and the Pacific Rim. And they said, it's a, it's a unique chemistry. And I said, okay. So I went to my Chinese friends. We created the show. We were um, going around uh, trying to find uh, title sponsors. We have a fabulous one with Beijing Ambridge International Culture Development Limited, um, which is a, a communications and PR firm. Um, and um, they are fabulous people to, to work with. I have been given virtual, all uh, complete control of the content of the show. It is almost all English language. Uh, we are now in our, um, in our second year. Uh, and it has been a fabulous, fabulous ride. I have had so much fun. There is a lot of history that we involve. We mostly uh, uh, dwell on, on culture. Uh, to give you an idea of the, of the history part of this, I don't know if the name Roy Rowan means anything to you or not. All right, Roy Rowan was the, um, uh, the founder of the Time Life Bureau in Hong Kong. He found it right after the, um, I believe after the uh, communists um, you know, took over in 1949. He was one of two Americans who uh, covered the Chinese Civil War. Uh, and, um, and lo and behold, Roy Rowan lived about maybe three or four miles from me in my hometown in Connecticut. Uh -huh. So we were paired up with a mutual friend. He's, he was 96 years old at the time that I interviewed him. I actually went to my home and I, I brought a friend of mine, Mr. Li Mingguan of China Press. As it turns out, we were the last two people to interview him before he died. Uh, but Roy has written a book called Chasing the Dragon. You have to look for this book. It is incredible. He was there for everything. He knew everybody. And he had stories and he was telling us these stories as if he was reliving them in his living room uh, down on Steamboat Road in, in, in Greenwich. And it was a mesmerizing experience. So we have had people um, like him. Uh, we so have it's had a study of China, yes, history and culture of China, history and culture of uh, of China. Um, about what he uh, went through, about interviewing Chiang Kai Shek and Mao Zedong and uh, Zhou Enlai and you know the Song sisters it's and you know I mean stories. everybody, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Um, and so um, that is just one example of of history and culture that uh, that we have had. Uh, but uh, we've had. You know, m many others. We've had uh, guests from China, also uh, here in uh, in the United States, uh, and and even beyond. I'm going to be having uh, somebody uh, by the name of uh, Jim uh, Lindsay. His mother was an insurgent uh, during the um, you know the Chinese uh, Civil War period, um, and uh, he now lives in Australia. She uh, she passed away, but uh, wrote a book that she well he edited the book called Bold Plum, and uh, she's going to be or he's going to be on. Uh, and about um, oh you know, boy, I can I can feel your excitement about this. You, yeah. you you reach out to the whole world. Yes, we have a global and you, you audience. You connect on uh, I guess some kind of telephone line or uh, maybe a digital line. Well, we um, uh, WGCH has a um, a place where you can click it and you can listen to everything streaming audio. So we do the uh, the live broadcast, which is on Saturday mornings at ten thirty a.m. Eastern time, which means here you got to get up at four thirty in the morning, <laughs> but that's okay uh, because we do have a um, on demand. A, we do have a site on podcasts.com. Uh, okay, I have everything um, you know up loaded there, all of the broadcasts, so you can listen, listen to those at your leisure. If you're on the email list, I can send you the link um, you know, to that, and you can also listen to it at your leisure as, uh, as well. Well, I, I get the idea that the underlying, the common denominator here is history. Yes. Uh, and that fascinates you, and indeed, you know, can you achieve mindful awareness in this world without an appreciation of the historical indeed. context? yes, yes. And I want to talk about my, just for a minute or two, I'm talking about my, uh, throw at you my idea that we don't have enough historical context, and that's one of the reasons this country is having so much trouble with government. Uh, the people are dissociated with government, yeah. and possibly that is because they don't understand the government is theirs, and they are, and and uh, they are the government. Okay. Um, and 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 if, unless you understand the formation of the country in the first place, yes. you know the circumstances around its organization and its constitution, yeah. you can't possibly feel connected because that is the connecting document. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder if that drives you. I wonder how you feel about that issue. I wonder if that's what makes it so interesting to you, so exciting as you 
as you framed it, um, in both uh, radio and in your in your online sure, activities. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's gotten to the point where it's actually taken on a life of its own. <laughs> yeah, it's all remote control. And, and also, actually, you, you pose a, an excellent question. Um, uh, one of the things that I will tell you that it should be of concern, I think, to many people is, is that we do send out and we do employ in the government and, and elsewhere, you know, policymakers, right? And in order for them to make good policy, it's, I, I believe that there's a, a logical you know, train of thought that says, well, they should have a good background in the historical context of, um, of things. The Chinese are very, very good at this. They, I discovered that especially when I was over in Beijing for the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. They, are, they, they probably know more about, uh, about America than we do about, mm. uh, about oh, China. Sure. Uh, and uh, they are very, very well schooled in this. They're very, they're extremely intelligent people. Um, and, uh, and we have a very, very close affinity with each other, I think, as a result in many ways. Um, but yes, I, I think that in order for us to truly understand what is going on is that uh, taking things in terms of, a, of an historical context is very, very important. The one thing, of course, is that we are also discovering new things all the time. There is new literature. New um, things and, about and new old things events. About old events. Uh, you know, boy, you know, you, they say, you know, everything old becomes new again, you know, yeah, and it goes yeah. again and again. Um, and that also makes it very, very interesting, um, you know. And so uh, they're always uh, finding, uh, you know, things. They, they, I mean, uh, dovetail a little bit. They, uh, there was one thing I put on Facebook where they found, I guess they were able to do DNA research on some of the mummification remains of the, um, of the pharaoh, you know, royal families in Egypt. And they found out that they were not necessarily from Africa. They were actually people that came, I believe, from, um, uh, you know, maybe Southern Europe or something uh, like that, maybe uh, Greco-Roman or, or Turkish or, or whatever. And, um, and, and so they were not necessarily the indigenous people, but they were a ruling class based on being, oh, you know, interesting. From, so the, the sweep went north, then came back yes, south. Yes, and so it's very, very interesting to, uh, uh, to find out, um, you know, things uh, of that nature. So, um, you know, uh, archives are being opened all of the time. Uh, I had a, um, uh, a guest on my show uh, who was able to do uh, research on, on a book that he wrote um, on newly uh, opened archives in Russia, as well as in Korea, China, you know, all over the place. Uh, and, um, and we're finding new things all the time. What's your future? Where is this all going to go? Because you're, you know, you're running at 100 miles an hour now. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, go for 120. Where, yeah, or 50 or whatever. I mean, uh, where, where, where does it take you? I mean, I can't imagine how this is going to evolve. Can you imagine how it will evolve? No, I, I can't. Uh, and I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. I, I don't know where this is going to go. You know, part of the thing, uh, the dynamic rather, that is going on is that the technology, the new discoveries, the, uh, the, uh, the evolution and the re-evolution of culture and, um, and uh, the global relationships that we have with the different peoples and things like that is being reinvented all the time. Um, and it makes it a fascinating time to, uh, to be alive, if you will, it really does. Yeah. So I, I don't know, uh, the one thing I will tell you that because of this, uh, the radio show, as well as what we're doing at History Education Hawaii and other things that I'm involved in right now, I am meeting some of the most truly extraordinary people really, really extraordinary people. And uh, so uh, there are a lot of people like us out there who uh, uh, we have in common um, that are trying to do the same thing as, as we are. So in a sense, we are a rather disparate global community and uh, we are staying in touch with each other. Thank goodness for, uh, for the technology to be able to do this. And we'll see what, uh, what happens. Yeah. Jeffrey Bingham Mead, he's <laughs> happy to be alive. He's yeah. uh, mindfully aware. Yeah. And the amazing well, I don't know about thing that. is that when he grew up, <laughs> He was a shy child. Uh, I, it's, you know what, that's true. No, it's true. I was actually a very, very shy child. I really was. Sounded like he got over it. I got it in grad you, school, Jeffrey. yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll continue to behave myself as best I can. And this was fun. This was really a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you, you, Jeffrey.